Hi, uh, John from York and Bay Financial Partners, uh, looking at the investment markets. Obviously a big sigh of relief uh, for the global trade uh, this week with the, uh, the, the uh, large ship that was uh, stuck uh, in the Suez Canal finally being moved and uh, that sort of unblocking that uh, major shipping canal. Now it's going to take quite a while for that backlog to be cleared. Uh, So that obviously just placed a fresh pressure on the sort of supply chain with COVID as well. It just adds a little bit more angst out there. In the US waiting to hear what uh, President Biden comes out with with a potential sort of infrastructure fund um, talk on the street, that could be as much as two and a half to three trillion dollars. Now that's on the back of the 1.9 trillion that came in stimulus package. Um, also as well, obviously the low interest rates, and that's really just uh, getting the economy moving. And it's a uh, moving for more as a sort of a rescue or a recovery mode. Now what will be very interesting as well as we come up to sort of end of the quarter, uh, we start to get into the reporting season then in April um, with the US companies. It'll just be very interesting to see one, what the earnings are like, but also as well their guidance going forward. Because certainly the data has been pretty solid, uh, but also as well, you've got to bear in mind, interest rates have nudged up, you know, really quite dramatically, especially in the 10 year, um, you know, that's up around sort of 0 0.8, 0 0.9 uh, to around sort of 1.7, 1.75. Vaccines are still being rolled out at a pretty good rate in the US as well, uh, very close to their sort of 2 million a day target. Vaccine's also going pretty well in the UK. Um, really looking at now sort of a, a major sort of relaxation of the restrictions um, with a potential sort of reopening of the economy fully sort of um, by around sort of uh, end of uh, end of June. Now it's really pretty good news uh, because you know the UK really have done it pretty tough. It's been a very long, hard 12 months. You know, that's really in contrast uh, to, to Europe, uh, where you're starting to see a potential sort of third wave coming through of COVID. And really, this is probably on the back of the fact that uh, many countries view that now the vaccine is out and started to get distributed, life can really go back to normal. Now certainly the vaccine makes a big difference. Uh, uh, latest studies on the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine have come out that with one jab will give you 80%, uh, two jabs give you over 90%. Now that's a pretty major feat when you look back, uh, you know, really just six months ago, we really didn't even know, you know, how sort of uh, efficient these uh, vaccines were gonna be and certainly when they were gonna be rolled out. Oil's backed up a little bit, but still above 60 bucks on the WTI.
Australia's had another little blip uh, with Brisbane going into a three-day lockdown on the back of a, uh, a potential sort of a, a COVID case, um, having the test. And then while he was waiting for the results, then decided to have a party and go to several uh, places of public interest and, uh, you know, potentially sort of spread the virus. And it's just sort of incidents like that that, you know, really have implications for a potential sort of trans-Tasman bubble. But Brisbane aside, uh, Australia is now obviously in a, again, a recovery mode, not so much on the COVID, but just on the back of the recent flooding and really trying to get back and to sort of, you know, assess the damage. Um, certainly the bill is going to be pretty, uh, pretty large. Um, initial estimates are around sort of two and a half to three billion dollars. It's also going to be interesting in Australia as well to see what happens now because JobKeeper uh, allowance is now finished and it's just going to be interesting to see how many people actually end up now being unemployed and uh, obviously uh, sort of increasing those unemployment stats. Here in New Zealand, the government facing quite a bit of criticism on their uh, uh, new sort of housing tax. But then in another blow to the government's sort of housing plan to build more houses, um, there's a potential sort of timber shortage. With Carter Holt uh, announcing that uh, they can no longer be able to supply Bunnings of Mitre 10 uh, with, uh, with uh, timber framing. Now that obviously has some pretty major implications out there for a building program and it's you know, trying to build more houses um, when you don't have the raw materials to be able to start. The date for the budget has been set as well in New Zealand. It'll just be very interesting to see what comes out of that. There is a new bond in the marketplace, TransPower, five year. Rate hasn't been set yet, but indicative rate looks around sort of 1.45 to 1.5. Now, if you're interested in that, go to the website www.bayfinancialpartners.co.nz. You know, really very interesting here in New Zealand. It's, it's just over a year ago since we went into lockdown. And, uh, you know, who could have forecast that uh, sort of 12 months ago, we would now be in a situation like this where the economy has not completely recovered, but recovered certainly a lot better than most people thought. Now, in this low interest rate environment, so if you are looking for income, there are plenty of alternatives available out there. And if you're interested in uh, seeing what's available, go to www.bayfinancialpartners.co.nz for lots of interesting articles. I'm looking forward to speaking to you soon.